Jay, thank you. The Georgia students started lining up for this one at 7.30 this morning. With Kentucky in town, it's a big one. The SEC on ESPN. And from Stegman Coliseum, number 13, Kentucky, facing the Bulldogs in a raucous arena. And which fox will outfox the other is a major part of the storyline. The Georgia coach didn't have to deal with the Kentucky stock. He's somewhere in there. Dickie V, the first time they met, could be big today. Well, it was an overtime basketball game, but this game is big right now. It's a must game. When I walked in, I met Mark Bradley, local writer of the Atlanta Constitution, and he said to me, and I couldn't agree more, a must game for Georgia if they're entertaining any dream of being considered for an NCAA berth. On the other side, John Calipari has rebooted his team after a few losses. He's giving his assistant coaches a lot more say in those huddles. That is something different for him. Well, you know, I'll believe that when I see it, though, John <laughs> Calipari. However, the difference is they bought into the last two games playing team defense. They've guarded people. And if they guard people with the offensive firepower they have, they can win. This club's been a little up and down, but the last two games, they have shown tremendous progress. Now, Chris Button will have more on that story about those assistants and how chatty they're going to be in those huddles here this evening and the fans are certainly ready to rock and roll in georgia tonight it's important that georgia gets off to a big lead and gets a good start to keep the crowd alive but kentucky has a way with their swag and their talent to be able to negate that kentucky coming in at 21 and 5 Georgia at 15 and 11 of the Bulldogs win the opening tip. We are underway. Frazier very quick with the rock in his hands right now, being played by Fox. Dante made with his first touch. Top score at 19 points a game. He's really having a great season. I think worthy of All-American consideration. Yeah, he's got to make sure he stays out of foul trouble. Nice little chair drop there. Frazier gets it to go. You know, I love a guy like Frazier. He was a big-time recruit, two-star out of high school. He believed in himself, and he showed people, I can play with all these big guys, these McDonald's All-Americans. Of course, Kentucky has those McDonald's All-Americans all over the floor. They're tied for first place in the SEC with Florida. Gabriel up top, shot clock down to seven. Fox... Has to operate now, working on Frazier. He lost it. Taken away by the Georgia point guard. He'll pull up and pop. And a whistle on the play, a foul inside the first minute. Let's go to Chris. Well, Dave, as you were saying, John Calipari has really tried to reel it back and allow his assistants to be more vocal. So I asked him how he's handling it since he is such an animated coach. And he said, well, I've taken the weight of the world off my shoulders. I had time to go get a second cup of coffee after practice. And I certainly don't ruin nearly as many suits as I used to. I asked Jaron Fox about it. And he said, yeah, there's a noticeable difference during games. He said, don't let the man fool you. It's still your normal Coach Cal during practices. Yeah, you know, he was sweating through those suits, Dickie B, kind of like yep. you do. Hey, absolutely, though, what Chris said. There's no doubt about it. He's still the animated guy, and he's the guy who will be there right in their faces if things don't go well. He's not going to change that, Obi. Not whatsoever. He's been doing it for years. A great start for J.J. Frazier, who exploded for 29 in Knoxville recently. That long shot will just nick the iron by Monk and knocked out of play. It'll be back over to Georgia. Got some good assistance on the staff guy. Kenny Payne came out of Louisville. I mean, an outstanding player. He likes Kenny who's right there. I mean, talk about Barbie as well. Tony Barbie and Kenny Payne. Both do. Tony Barbie was the head coach. I mean, there he is, Johnson's between both guys. John told us of his workout today. I want to give the kids a chance to hear from some different voices inside those huddles because it's now late in the season. Beta had that one knocked out of his hands. Monk in transition. Here's Briscoe. What a beautiful move. Nice drive right there. Uh oh, we got a player going down. That's Mayton who is uh -oh. clutching at the knee, Dick. Uh oh. Dante Mayton, a 6'8 uh -oh. junior. Who's having such an outstanding year, 19 points, 7 rebounds a game. The heart and soul guy in the lane there, and down he went. That would be certainly a major loss to say to see any player get hurt. He's a big-time scorer, their inside presence. Oh. 
Briscoe with a sensational spinning layup. But right into Mayton. Had a scary incident today also in a Michigan State game with Purdue. Aaron Harris, Harris. Had, had to leave the ball game. It's right on a stretcher. Oh, pray that he's okay. He's now up in a seated position. Briscoe going right into that knee See at an he, awkward angle. Seems he's got any ability to flex the knee. He's trying to observe there. And then Mike Edwards, the 6'9 sophomore, about to report in. And this is a really, really promising sign, although clearly hobbled, but at least able to get up. However, he's skipping off and heading right for the trainer's room. Be tough to win here this, uh, this early evening without him in the lineup. You're talking 19 points, you're talking a rebounder, you're talking confidence inside, you're talking about a guy that draws double teams. Yeah, the guy who had a monster game, for example, against Kansas, 30 points and 13 rebounds. He's had great games against great competition. The kid Edwards has got to step up now. He played well in the last game. Made some good post moves on the inside. Parker on the baseline, denied there. Shot clock down to 11. Frazier will lift and miss. And now look out for Fox, who did not play in the first meeting because he was laid low with flu-like symptoms. That's a traveling violation. Well, the one thing they're hoping for on Mark Fox told me before the game is that we can negate their transition ability. When you look at Kentucky, they're one of the high-powered scoring teams in America. They get up and down the floor so quickly, and they can score in spurts. I mean, when they're playing their A game, Monk and Fox, they're as good as any guard combo in the nation. Well, I think you might agree with this. I have not seen a quicker guard in America than De'Aaron Fox this season. Not one guy. Parker harassed off the back of the iron with that shot. Somebody's going to have to step up like Parker and help them out. They're going to find scoring somewhere with Mayton on the sideline. Derek Willis now to the game, the 6'9 senior for Kentucky. I like the way Kentucky's moving the basketball. Out of bio with a little hook and in and out. And Abayo gives him that post presence on the inside. Suddenly a diaper dandy that has lived up to expectations. He's their leading rebounder, leading shot blocker. Downstairs for Edwards, and he airmailed it. He's got a deliver in there. They need him to step up now. Oh, what a pick there by Frazier. A one-handed theft. I really like Frazier. Jerry Tipton wrote an article today about him and his numbers being compared to him Tyler Eulis, the star little guy that was unbelievable for Kentucky last year. Parker will fire. That did not touch a thing. He's wide open, too. Wide open. So now Fox will take his time. New hairstyle for him. He said, you know, the social media blew up on it. And they didn't like it at all. But he said, I expected that. Well, you know what? At least he's got a hairstyle. I don't have it. <laughs> I wish I had a hairstyle. Briscoe That's with true. a miss. That's the man bun. You could have pulled it off. Frazier with a dipsy do. What a tremendous drive. He's off to a sensational start. You Offensively and defensively. Well, he likes the big stage right now. He knows right now it's a chance for him to shine. Oh, wow. Monk with the triple. Getting 42% out there. That's been the story of his career. What about that 47-point game he had? Unbelievable against North Carolina. Well, he had 37 against Georgia in the first meeting, so he was almost as good against the Bulldogs. He also hit a basket with about 7-8 seconds that sent him to overtime. Parker trying to get around Bam. The kick out. Nicely done there by Will Ridge, who started the 6'6 sophomore. Getting some serious minutes on the other end on a bio. Kentucky really moving the ball, sharing the basketball. Great ball movement. Frisco with a misfire, however, got a nice clean look, but well, came up empty. Well, one thing, Kentucky's going to like the tempo of the game. I mean, George is going to run up and down the floor with them. And that could be trouble. A great feed there for Fox and an easy two. Yeah, a tremendous pass to Fox, and he identifies his teammate who found him wide open. See, that could be really tough running up and down the floor with Kentucky and the speed and quickness they have on a perimeter. Well, Kentucky gets a shot up every 14.6 seconds. That's the second quickest among Power 5 schools. Man, you're on top of everything. OB, I've worked with you this year. Nothing shocks me. Edwards. Oh, the traveling violations in Obaska. Who's in the NBA? They would have counted it. Yes. And they would have said one. They would have counted it. Oh, take a look here. Fox with the great look. Here it is. Stolen by Mr. Frazier. 
Have the young Wildcats been defanged? More on that when we return. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by the All-In Burger from Applebee's. Well, you know, Kentucky was sailing along in the SEC until that upset loss against Tennessee. And that was followed by a loss to Kansas, an overtime win over Georgia. They nearly lost that one. And a blowout loss at Florida. So this is a team that was set up just beautifully early, Dick, and then trouble inside the Southeastern Conference as they dropped some games. Well, they dropped three out of four games when you include the game with Kansas, but the thing was they got dominated on the glass against Florida. They seem to regroup now. It seems, well, they showed in that game against Tennessee, revenge game, totally dominated it. Their defense has been picked them up. And I'll tell you what's really impressed me early in the game, the movement of the basketball. Sharing, like you shared a mic with me, they're sharing the basketball. They've been doing that all season long with his high-powered offense, averaging 89 points a game, fourth best in the country. Yeah, number one is UCLA at 91, the Lonzo Ball. Well, I would take number one in the NBA draft. I know Fultz is a good player, but I'd take Lonzo. Hawkins trying to penetrate Mulder, and that one off the back of the iron. Michael Mulder hits 39% out there, actually playing very well for Coach Cal lately. Yeah, Coach Cal told me today, he said, I'm really impressed the way he has worked hard to earn minutes. You know, one thing, you've got to earn your minutes. He's not just going to give you minutes. Giotta on the drive and can't connect, and Georgia having a lot of trouble outside of Frazier getting it in the basket. Well, their inside game is in a locker room right now. When you think about Maitens, 19 points a game, 7 rebounds a game. A baby or someone's got to step up on a post for them. Jackson. That one tipped out of play and back over to the Wildcats. The only way you negate the loss of a kid like Mayton, you have to make the three. And if you're not going to make the three, you're going to have a difficult time to survive against a talented team like Kentucky. And for Coach Fox, not a strength of his team, the three-point shot. No, not at all. Got a little half-court trap right here. And then four back into his zone. Nope, they're going man to man. Neither team shooting the lights out here in the early going at Stegman Coliseum. Fox denied. And the shot on the way from straight on and knocked in Willis. Terry Willis, the guy that can make shots. And if he does, as Jerry Tipton wrote today, his minutes go up. He keeps him on the floor. He got to produce. And he's got to make shots. That's one of his strengths. If he's good shooting the basketball, it elevates the Cats game. It's 16 against Tennessee in his last one. Jackson has come in shooting the three. He's missed a couple of those. Here's Mulder to fire. And that three-pointer on target. Now Mulder came to Kentucky with that unbelievable reputation as an outstanding three-point shooter. He's, by the way, a candidate. Kentucky on top, 13-8. Well, Kentucky beginning to get it rolling, and Yante Maiton is out of the ballgame, the 6'8 junior. George's real star, along with J.J. Frazier. He went crumpling down onto the floor, hobbled off. Chris Button, what is the latest on the Georgia 6'8 junior? Dave, he is doubtful to come back in this game with that knee injury. I did overhear Coach Fox trying to tell his players, we can do this without him. I know that he's a huge loss, but he was trying to convince his team they have the talent that they can beat Kentucky even without him. You got to think positive, Chris, and that's what he's trying to apply. But for that to happen, guys are going to have to make shots, especially the perimeter shot, because they're limited on the interior. Yeah, Kentucky's on an 11-4 run since he left the game. They do get it downstairs. Arbede, the 6 a sophomore, sticks in two. And that one off the fingertips of Adebayo and out of play. Well, Arbede did a nice job posting up on the inside. Got good ball movement. Nice little movement without the basketball. Created that opportunity. Well, he had the best performance of his season against Kentucky in Lexington. 18 points. Also did a great job rebounding on the team. Nice cut, and Parker with the stop. Nice little execution right there by Mark Fox's club. Boy, it's been heartbreak hotel for them when you look at their losses. Overtime on a road to Florida. Overtime on a road to Kentucky. One to Texas A&M in a controversial game with the clock. Unbelievable situation. Heartbreak in South Carolina. 
I mean, they've got games that are unbelievable. Look at right here. Unbelievable when you look at these scores. I mean, these are all inside the conference for Mark Fox's team. And, you know, we asked him about it today at their workout. He refused to cry about it, but there's no question. They have a brutal SEC schedule. They have to play the top teams, the top three, twice. And nobody else practically has to do that. And it paid the price with Hawkins at the line. Well, Hawkins now on the free throw line gives him a veteran. So I think for Kentucky to really be a threat, they have to have guys like Willis and Hawkins, veteran players, come out and contribute. You can't just rely on those diaper dandies on those kids like certainly Fox and Monk and Adebayo. They've done their job. The other guys have to step up. Hawkins, the senior, very reliable with the ball. Just 12 turnovers all season long. And Wenyan Gabriel coming back on now for John Calipari. By the way, the Hall of Fame coach of the University of Kentucky would like to wish his lovely eldest daughter, Erin, a very happy birthday today. Oh, happy birthday, John. Great family man and his beautiful wife. A proud father of three, one of whom is son Brad, of course, a member of this team. But happy birthday, Erin. Your daddy loves you. Hey, I had a chance to talk to his son a little bit before the game, and he wants the coach. Bain's back on the bench. Well, that could be very good news for Georgia. We will see, but as mentioned, it's unlikely that he's going to return. But a huge game for Georgia in their NCAA tournament hopes as that one is tipped out of play. Baton wearing number one and wearing an ice bag as well. Kentucky with a 15 to 12 lead early in Athens. <laughs> Pretty good. That's after the crossover game. Hey, let me just tell you this. To me, LeBron, everybody's talking about stats. You talk about what Westbrook's doing is phenomenal. Harden, what he's doing is phenomenal. But if I had to pick one guy when we start the playoffs, I want on my team, I want number 23. I want LeBron, the king. And I'm telling you this now. Don't get nervous, Golden State. But if he gets a healthy cast around him, Kevin Love comes back, and they get back J.R. Smith, I'm going with the Cavaliers. Because LeBron has that special Michael Jordan, Larry Bird, Magic Johnson, that incredible winner's mentality. Always striving to be better today than they were yesterday. And that's a sign of greatness. You're not going all NBA on me now, though, are you? No, gonna, no, no, I love college. So, you know yeah, that. I know you do. I love college inside out, Obi. You know that. The spirit. Briscoe. As that one knocked away the nine on the shot clock, 11.27 to go here in the first half. This game came the route of New Jersey, recruited by a guy who I think belongs on the sideline somewhere, Barry Rawson. Barry was on the staff with the St. John's. Things didn't work out. I'll tell you this, Barry Rawson is great with young people. Somebody should hire him on their staff immediately. Ten to get out of a shot now for the Cats. They don't wait very long. Gabriel back up top for Fox. Shot clock, it's three. Frisco has to hit that fall away, but that didn't touch anything. Well, he's not really a good long-range shooter. He's a driver and a slasher. Guy like Jackson. I like the little guy, J.J. Frazier. He's got something about him. You got to like him. You got to like a guy that plays with a lot of heart. I like 17 points, four and a half assists a game. That's not bad. He steals well. In fact, his numbers were very similar to Tyler Eulis. Another guy that listed at about 5'8". He's probably like 5'6". By the way, can I just add on? You and the big redhead, Bill Walton, a fascinating listen. We had a lot of fun. Now, Dave Pash deserves all the points. Is Dave Pash on that show? Oh, uh, he, Dave's a great guy. <laughs> Seriously, Scott. Great fellow. Thank great you. broadcaster. Briscoe with it. Out of bio and pushed from behind. Agbede with the personal. Coming up tonight at 8.15 of ESPN, we take you to the Dean Smith Center in Chapel Hill, the site of College Game Day for our Saturday primetime game. A big one in the ACC, number 14, Virginia, and number 10, North Carolina. Well, North Carolina defense, to me, they're as good as anybody in the nation. I think Jay Billis said that, and I couldn't agree more with Jay. They are really a team. They get the points. They can win it all. Fox to penetrate. Trying to get the shot up there, and that's going to be an offensive foul. Fox trying to drive to the goal. I think that was a bad call. I thought he got fouled. I thought Fox has a legitimate argument. It's number two. He has a legitimate complaint there. They bring in a veteran Hawkins for him. So he picks up his second personal. 10.25 to go here in the first half. 
And George able to hang in despite the loss of their best player. And it looks like for the game, now Frazier's bleeding a little bit too. Frazier! Down goes Frazier! Down goes Frazier! First meeting had an outstanding game against Kentucky, the one that went overtime in Lexington, 23 points. His dad, as a young kid, the article I read, made sure he didn't shoot threes until he got to high school. He didn't want to affect his mechanics in shooting the basketball. Started off really struggling shooting this year from the three, but picked it up. Albedo doubled up there, got it out to Frazier. He jumps into the lane. It'll be a traveling violation. Yeah, he's going to call right there. He definitely went off the pivot foot. He tried that little jump move. He's got some superb quickness. Kentucky has another great class coming in next year. They're not dead recruiting yet. Jason the Youngster by the way, Kevin Knox. He's also at Duke on the horizon as well as Florida State. Monk on the high drive, scoops it up there. He's made a couple of beautiful shots. Nice little drive by Monk. He knows he can shoot the three. He's had games where he's made seven. Talking about the three, what about Murray, the former cap? He went wild last time. He had nine threes in the game. I know there's no defense, but he still made nine threes. That's tough to do in practice. Edwards, that one he'll make as he banks it in off the window. Nice little execution there. Edwards moving along the baseline. They're hanging, they're hanging it again. Good spacing right there by Kentucky. Just a little he contact. Walked. That's a travel. Seen a, seen a lot of walks here. Seen a lot of walks. You know, moments ago, you talked about J.J. Frazier. Look at what he does here. He grabs the red undershirt because he's bleeding. Because if that blood gets on the white jersey, he's coming out. And he doesn't want to come out. This is very smart. Yeah, very smart. Cerebro. His dad, James, has done a great job with this young guy. He's a kid. The young kids out there. Believe, never give up. He didn't give up. He was a two-star. They said too small. Can't play. Oh, really? Can't play? Check his numbers out, baby. All oh, six field goals in the paint. And a whistle there with 9.03 left. Now go back to that monk move and how pretty this is. Well, he shows his athleticism right here. There's the drive down a straight drive. Right to the goal. Defense rotates over. Look at him hang. Great hang time. He's a special player. He's rated right now. Chad Ford has him sixth on his latest mock draft. And for Frazier, by the way, this is three shots. Hit in the act of shooting a three. And he is their best foul shooter. Not only that, at 87%. Of course, I jinxed him there. He's actually the best foul shooter in Georgia history over the course of his career. And right there, he misses that one. Think about this. For them to pull the upset here without making they got to make their free throws. They can't turn the ball over. They're going to have to have someone step up, knock it down some frames. If those don't happen, they can't beat this team. As you look at Nathan on the sideline. Well, nice to see him smiling there, but not able to re-enter the game. He is dying to get in. But the knee injury, incredible early in the game. Now we hope to have some more detail on that, but we were told... As Chris reported, you know, 10 minutes ago, that he's unlikely to return to this contest. Well, get your watch, Frazier. He's got nice mechanics on the shot. Out of bio on the low block. Some contact there. And it will call the foul, and it will go against Kentucky. Kentucky's getting a lot of tough calls against him right here early in the game. He's sitting right in the post. John Calabari cannot believe it. I can't believe it. Here he is sitting in the post. They muscle up on him. And then they're going to catch him right there with the shoulder. I thought they must have up on him a little bit early. Kessler took the hit. They went there with the no hand checking allowed. We've seen a lot more offense. We are, and that's the fans want. Here's Frazier way downtown. Did not touch a thing. That was not a good shot. Did not. The shot selection is important. He didn't take a good shot right there, Frazier. Hawkins. Watch the way they're moving the ball. That's something John told me today that they've been working on. Out of bio. Again up against Kessler. Easy two for him. Tell you what, he's so strong, physical. There's no telling how good that young guy's going to be. He's still a young kid. He's going to get bigger, stronger. He's got some nice footwork on the interior. Post moves. Trump lifts. 
Another one that didn't even get to the iron. Three-point shooting is not just strength, Obi. It is for Monk. He'll give it up for Hawkins. Monk is running the team with Fox on the sideline with two fouls. Oh, they've decided to get ahead of by him. Some touches. They're going to have to play him. They like the matchup. But a whistle is 7.53 remaining. And a foul underneath. We're going to take a look at Small. And that's not all. The little guys really lighten it up in college basketball this season. Impact players at six feet and under. Thomas, Lowry, and company Mason. Well, he's 5'11". 6-2, somewhere in there. Marcus Keene leading the nation in scoring. And how about J.J. Frazier at 5'10", getting 17 points a game for the Bulldogs. I tell you what, his quickness is unreal. Look at Mr. Keene right here, leading the nation in scoring. You know what? He's averaging 30 a game to me. My math says .8 is more than .5. He goes to the next number. Marcus, you're a PTP. He was the Dickie B player of the week when we even like 50 on the board. Hey, Isaiah Thomas, what he's doing with the Celtics is scary. Sacramento let him go. It's unbelievable. Neither team lighten it up here early on, really. Georgia is 0 for 7 beyond the three-point line. Well, they're trying to change that for Kentucky. A big battle for the rebound. This foul will go against Gabriel. Nice rebound right there. We saw a little thing in Frazier. Let me tell you this. As Howard Garfinkel would always say to me, he's up in heaven now, hoops heaven, the Garf would always say, pound for pound, inch for inch, the best man that I've ever seen in college, five foot six, Calvin Murphy. Yeah. He was electricity, man. Unbelievable. And Tiny Watchmore wasn't bad as well for his size when he played. Led the league in scoring and assists. Nate Archibald, Frazier with it. Edwards. <laughs> Edwards going to get out of that post. He can give a little post presence, spread the defense. Shooting the three has been a nightmare here for Georgia. The kick for Parker, mid-range. He sticks it. Parker's going to step up. Nice little middle-range jump shot. Got a game going. Kids are playing their hearts out right now. Kentucky's going to watch for a little letdown. The fact that Maiden's not playing, thinking that this could be automatic. He walked. Travel on Let's go to Chris. John Calipari was talking about during that last timeout was their spacing on defense, or as he says, their hug defense. He didn't like the spacing. And then on offense, they want to get the ball inside to Bam more. They think he's getting fouled, and they want more calls. Chris, he's exactly right. They want to get that ball to the interior, and they should. I don't think they could defend Bam on the inside. Parker lost the handle, and the foul on Frazier. And Hawkins got knocked off his feet, and Frazier helping him back up. Nice sportsmanship there, 6.39 to go. That might have been a good foul, I'll tell you why. He was looking diagonally, they had an open guy for a layup, for a layup. Frazier with his first. I look at some of the numbers with Kentucky, they're scary in terms of offensively. 89 points a game, as you said earlier, Obi. Fourth in scoring in the nation. Scoring margin, fourth in the nation. Block shots, tenth in the nation. They really, with the free throw attempts, they're twelfth. They go to the, and they're rebounding on the top twelve. Whistle is 6.33 to go in the half. And a one-point lead. We're talking about Frazier with a classy gesture after the foul. As you said, probably not a bad foul. And then immediately going right over to Dominic Hawkins. And helping him to his feet. Frazier just picked up his second personal, so he's going to have to sit now. Yeah, you don't want him to get a third for the half. Six minutes, they're going to play without Frazier and without Nate. That's a matter of 36 points. Well, Airborne had to change that shot at the last moment. He has got great body control. Oh, he really he does. He really does. He controls his body up in the air really well. Now, he's scoring at a higher clip than any player John Calipari uh, has ever coached. Hawkins to lay it up off the window. Nice play defensively by Hawkins. And then he finishes it on the offensive end. He converts an offense. Kentucky, they can go to the bench and bring in quality players. And conversely, Georgia without Maton and without Frazier at the moment, who may have to sit for the next six minutes. This is a danger time. I don't know how long you can keep Frazier out. I really don't. That worries so much about the two. Parker nearly made the shot. He was fouled in the act of shooting a two-pointer. 
So he will be at the line. Jawan Parker, very good free throw shooter at 87%. He's going to buy some time here with Frazier on that sideline. Hey, coming up on Sunday, it's UConn and Temple inside the American in Philadelphia. I'll be up there with Doris Burke on Sunday afternoon at 4 o'clock. Give my best to Doris. She is so good at what she does. Both everything she does, NBA, women's basketball, men's basketball. She's a talent. I want to be her agent. I want you to be your your agent. (laughs) Yeah, right. Hey, people don't realize this. My guy on my left, he started down here. He worked. You called all the Georgia games. I did my research. On radio. Am I right? You're right. Radio. And you did all, you did football as well. Yeah. Play by play. Your daughter, Samantha, went here. That's right. And she was also a member of the Hoop Squad. She was. The Hoop Girl. Wow. And then you you got got a son that went to their rival in football. Yes. Bama. Those were Alabama. So you're SEC. Some tough Saturdays between those two, believe me. Yeah. So you're SEC. Yep. My boy's Samantha, yeah. Yeah. And that that sounds like my Google profile right there. And you the Syracuse. Yes. I can't wait to get up to the carry again on Wednesday night for that big game against Duke. He's on fire right now. Oh, that'll be a great environment inside the dome. He's going to stop and then he took the stop here. Hawkins. No, rebound tip controlled by the Bulldogs. Tell you one thing, the Bulldogs kids that are playing, they're playing their heart. They are giving everything humanly possible against this talented Kentucky team. They have a chance to take the lead here. And they're playing shorthanded. Patience on offense is going to be a key for them here. They get good shots. Down to seven on the shot clock. That's smart. Don't take some time off the clock without Frazier. Tumbling through the lane. Edwards is fouled as he is tripped up. And that was with three on the shot clock for Georgia. There aren't many teams that have had a heartbreaking year that they've had with their loss. In fact, Rick Barnes made a comment about that. They came back to a 14 down in the second half against Tennessee. And make no doubt about it, the coaches in this league have gotten better and better. You watch Tennessee and you watch Alabama with Avery Johnson and Rick Barnes, what they're going to do in the future. They are going to have programs that are going to be highly, highly competitive. No doubt. Hawkins with a foul there, his first. Edwards shooting a one and one. 5.02 to go in the first half in Athens, and he knocks in the first one. I think the league is a year to two possibly away from being the old SEC, where every game was a barber. Let's face it, right now, the reason this game is so big to Georgia. They don't get opportunities to play many nationally rated teams. The one thing in the ACC, you get beat by a Duke, you get a chance with a Carolina, or you get a chance with a Louisville. You don't get that in this conference. So when you get that chance, you got to deliver. Well, they're getting it today. They had a chance to take the lead, but a missed free throw by Edwards, 21 apiece. They're one area that excels it. They have really done a great job negating the transition game of Kentucky. There's no power move. Went for the pass there. Got it back. I'm not sure how he did. Kind of a little too unselfish. Out of bio. Thanks to the other of Frisco. Not there. Don't take a chance to let Briscoe shoot the perimeter shot. Don't take that chance. This crowd is alive, man. They're alive. Harry Dog is going wild. Harry Dog. They want the lead. And a turnover. And a tie up on that play. The possession arrow is Kentucky's. So we check out the SEC standings. I want to get your opinion on how many do you think are getting in to the NCAA tournament? A lot of people think possibility of five if you include you know Alabama Arkansas this Georgia team on the bubble right now you know Arkansas and Alabama need to do a little winning yet there's no question about it when you look at their total resume of quality wins Florida what a job Mike White's done in fact Mike White to me could be in the mention as not only SEC coach of the year, national coach of the year. That's how good he's been with Florida, who suffered a big blow losing a Bruno, their interior guy, for the rest of the year. That's the big man out of bio. Nice touch there along the baseline. And he comes in averaging 13 points a game. He was not much of a factor in game one against Georgia. Just five rebounds. He was in foul trouble. 
collapses. Turtle Jackson gets two. Turtle Jackson's a guy that can make some things happen. He's quick. Good drive to the basket. Chris Collins done a great job, too. Let's not forget him down in Northwest. Outstanding work. They're, they're going to be dancing for the very first time. Oh, oh he got hit. He hit him, no question. And while shooting a three. A bad play defensively right there. Bad, bad play. So Monk gets drilled. We're tied at 23. Georgia missing a couple of key players. But they're sticking right with the Wildcats here tonight. John, thank you very much. Everybody painted up here in Athens. And coming up at halftime, the Alfa Romeo halftime report. Kansas sneaks by Baylor. And the Zags remain perfect. I'll tell you one thing about Kansas. They find a way to win. They won that incredible game Monday night, which I had the good fortune to sit at courtside with Bob Schuson. And I'll tell you, that was unbelievable. Gonzaga, what a job they're doing down there Martin Field. But, you know, he won that close game. He won the close game over Texas Tech before that yep. by one or two, and then he wins that bail but He finds a way to win. He's got the winner's mentality, and I'll tell you this, Obi, 13 years in a row winning a power conference. Give me a break. That is unbelievable. You can't even describe that. Maiden there on your right, Frazier on the left. Mate now with an injury. Frazier saddled with two fouls. And so he's been in a seated posture, and they really needed him for the last few minutes. Although Georgia has made enough shots to stay close. Monk shooting three here. Yeah, that was just like giving him a three-point play, three-point shot. Really not a good play defensively by Georgia. Monk makes 83%. Freshman from Arkansas drains them all. Big rotation. They must have died in Arkansas when he decided to go to Kentucky. Local kid. They weren't the only school, by the way. No, not the only school. But, all right, now zone it. A little zone. See, John Calabari witnessed how really ineffective they are shooting from the perimeter. I think it's a smart move. Move to the zone. Jackson wants to penetrate and scoop it up there for two. Wow. He went right in the gap of that zone. Drove straight line to the goal. Tremendous drop. Jackson's made two nice drives. Are you surprised? With their losses right here in terms of injury and fouls, that the Bulldogs are right there. Oh, absolutely surprised. Really surprised how they've been able to make the run again. Out of bio. Good luck stopping that. Can't handle him inside. Smart move. They should pound it in and go inside, outside. That used to be old trend in the game on Wednesday I talked about in the NBA. Go to the big post players to throw the ball out. The game's changed. Now more of that pick and roll, shoot the three, transition. Knocked out of play by Monk. You know, he used to have all those big guys, his post guys, Bill Walton, Jabbar, Bob Lanier, Thurman, I mean Shaquille. We don't have those kind of post players. We don't have a Moses Malone. So coaches are opening up the attack. Same on a collegiate level. You don't have many guys like Ben out of bio that can play down in that post and be strong and tough. There aren't many specimens 6'10, 260 to begin with, which is what the freshman is. Frazier back in now and running the offense with three to get off the shot. Out of bio with the block. Now the shot, not well dropped on the second effort, and the foul on the floor with 216 remaining in the first half. The reason people wonder why Frazier back out. I'm thinking right now, Mark Fox, and I, you know, I agree with him. He's afraid this could get away by halftime. You know, a team like Kentucky in two minutes could go 7 up, 9 7 0, go on a spurt, and he's trying to negate that spurt. He can't take a chance. I think it's a smart move that he brought Frazier back. Briscoe just picked up his first foul. And Bayday's got to convert here. That's been tough for him, 59% yes, at the line for the season. You can't pull the upset if you can't make free throws and occasionally make a free. Like Beta at 6'8", already at his season average for rebounds at 7 for this one, but a miss. Brisco, head up, driving hard. Here's Monk. That three won't drop. See? They got to take some time off the clock. You want to go in at halftime with a good chance. You don't want this lead to go to eight and nine. Parker with the jumper. 
shooting's really been tough on both clubs. Mark over the top for Bam and the slam. Tell you one thing, he's special. They got to go to him more. I don't think they go to him enough during the course of the year. They now have 75 dunks in 27 games. Anthony Davis owns the Calipari era record with 92. Foul with a minute 30 to go before the break. Physicality. Great look right here. There's the lob over the top. That's Kentucky at their best. Run, baby, run. Run, baby, run. The catch, man. Briscoe with foul number two, and it'll be Frazier at the line for a one and one. See, he's he's taking advantage of his size, post player. As I said earlier, there aren't many of those guys around, and he's an example of an old school center. Get a low box, take advantage of his strength. John Calipari with the open collar look, no more ties. Well, you know he has a closet full of them. He's just not wearing them. Is a classic full of anything he wants. <laughs> but that paycheck he's getting is pretty good. They pay you well down in Kentucky. If you produce, I knew the guy when he had no cash. I knew when he was starting out. You know, he used to meet us in a parking lot when he was at Massachusetts because he wanted PR. Now you got to go through the whole staff. You got to go through everybody to get time to talk to him. I was teasing about that today on the phone. And he used to meet us. We come off the, the out of our car in a parking lot in Massachusetts just stand away to talk to us. Those were the old days. Yeah. Kentucky with a 30-26 lead and the ball here as they come down the stretch of the first half in Athens. Obey, Obey who's got to do a job now, Gordon, out of, out of bio. They're going to try to get him out of bio inside again. Here he goes. He's got to play it one-on-one. -on -one. He walked. Yes, he did. Yeah, that's who he Travel on Kentucky. But if you're Georgia, if you're within... You know, four or five or six points at halftime. You've got to consider that, for Coach Fox, a major victory. Yeah, moral victory. But unfortunately, because of their record, you know, if they had a little better record, the NC committee, if certainly maintenance comes back for the rest of the year, would look at it that. But you're 15 and 11. they got to get a win. They can't get a moral victory here. Frazier with a jumper. He sticks it. They're calling that a two-pointer. And I'm sure they're going to take a look at that when we go to halftime. So that could change the score. I would take him out now. I would get him out of the game. I would want him to get that third right now. Mark on the crossover to the baseline. Mulder will lift it and hit it. What he knocks big, in the long-distance shot. What a big plus. He's going to get a lot more minutes. He has really come on strong. His dad drives down from Windsor, Canada to see him play on a regular basis. Puts up a lot, a lot of miles. Five-point lead here for Kentucky. Georgia with the ball, and they can whittle it just about down to the final second. Well, we can and oh, the foul as well. What a silly foul. He's 80 feet from the goal. Oh, wait a minute. They're going to wave off that, and they're going to go to a traveling by Oh, he's got a traveling So him. that was overturned. Got a lucky break there. So Georgia will have the ball in the last seven seconds. And a lucky break there. That's a walk. He pulled a walk. This point, yep. Now you got to try to, now you got to try to score here. Now let's go back to see whether it was a two or a three couple of moments ago by Georgia. Looks like it's he has two. both it's feet on two. the line, in fact. So good, yeah, two. good call by the official. I can see them on one high. Frazier's got a hustle now. Three seconds. His three-pointer. He goes! Oh, Frazier! 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 Are you serious, Frazier? He's making all the little players in the nation get excited. JJ! Oh, Obi! Take a look. That's a three. No doubt about it. He shot that from Atlanta. He shot that from Mariana. That ripped the nets. Frazier right in front of the buzzer. Let's go to Chris with Cal. Coach Calipari with Frazier in foul trouble in the maintenance injury. How has Georgia been able to keep this one so close? They did a great job. I mean, they're playing. We're, uh, we got a couple guys that aren't playing with energy that won't play much in the second half if they don't pick it up. But this is a good team. Georgia's a good team. Appreciate that. Chris, thank you very much.
Well, Georgia's sticking with them. Some may be surprised, 33-31 at the break. Now the halftime report with Reese, Jay, and Seth. Welcome back to the SEC on ESPN. And this was the scene earlier today, about 7.30 this morning, as the Georgia fans lined up here in Athens, ready to roar. And now getting back at it for the second 20 minutes, the SEC on ESPN, it's Kentucky and the Georgia Bulldogs here from Stegman Coliseum. Great to have you with us, Dave O'Brien, alongside Dick Vitale. And that first half, Georgia lost their best player very early as he went down with a knee injury, but able to hang around and play very well. Well, the reason they're hanging around is the play of Frazier. Frazier made big, big shots. He has two fouls, but so does Fox on the other side, and he's certainly a catalyst for Kentucky. But the real key has been certainly playing good defense in transition. They have not allowed Kentucky to run up and down the floor. Remember, this is the team that averages close to 90 points a game. Well, the highlights, it was a low light for Georgia as Yontay Mate went down with that knee injury. He had to hobble off the court. He is unlikely to return. Now, Kentucky able to get it going a little bit after that. And Chris caught up with Coach Cal right before halftime. I mean, they're playing. We're, uh, we got a couple guys that aren't playing with energy that won't play much in the second half if they don't pick it up. Well, this is one of the reasons why they're back to a cut and a big three by Frazier right before the first half came to an end. And that got Georgia to within a couple. He, he might have been the littlest guy on the floor. Take a look right here. Kentucky versus Georgia on the glass. Unbelievable right here. Second half chance points. I think Adebayo certainly is a key factor here in the second half. They're going to have to find a way to negate him because Kentucky's going to pound the ball inside. He had eight points and five rebounds in the first 20. Frazier and Monk plays. Frazier and Fox are playing each other, and they both have two fouls. First shot of the second half, not there by Wilridge. And Fox quickly into the offensive zone. Briscoe out of bio. Fox brings so much quickness. He really creates a problem for the defense as he runs the ball up the court. They're a different team when he's at the control. You know, Frazier's guard number two fouls. He's trying to post him up a little. Look at that side. He wants to take him one on one. Four to get off a shot. He'll drive it, leaning in. No. Right back up and in by Isaiah Briscoe. Briscoe's one of those guys. Versatile. Helps you in many ways. Good rebounder for a guard. That was an example. Good offensive rebound. Here right now, Frazier's trying to take box off. Nice pass. Oh, you got to convert that. You got to convert that. Edwards could not get it done. And they got a little bit of like a day still going to the goal. It's wide open. You got to finish that baby flush it. Willis blew right by Edwards and laid it in. Oh, two breaks. You got to really hurt him on the defensive end and hurt him on the offensive end. Willis with a good drive. So Kentucky up by six. Looks like Mr. Calipari got their attention. Said a couple guys didn't play. With the energy they like, and if they want to play, they're going to have to show some energy. Willis showed some right there. There's your off target there. He had scored the first six points of the game and the last six right before the break. See right now, inside of that beta is going to be really challenged. Monk with a fall away. No. Good rebound. Abede with the board. He's been very tough on the glass here so far tonight. You know, we can't emphasize enough to lose some meat. 19 points a game, 7 rebounds a game, post presence, inside out, he shoots the 3 at 52%. They've got the same play again. Yes, yes. despite nice the heavy traffic, he got it to go. Well, I haven't used the glass really well right there. They seem to be able to run that two-man game. In fact, you're having a tough time communicating and handling it. Let's go back and in. Drawing the contact, that's going to be an offensive foul. That was Parker hitting the deck. Take a look at this now. The first half shot location. Georgia heavy in the paint. Only one for eight, Dick, from the three-point line. Let's go to Chris. Well, Coach Fox told me that he told his team at halftime if they're going to win this one without Maiden, they're going to have to do it in a way that they've never done before, that they're going to have some disjointed lineup. I asked him who they have to rely on as a third scorer, and he said it can't be one person specifically. We're going to have to do this one by committee. 
That's a pretty good save right there because they don't have anybody that stepped up to be a third scorer. So everybody now has got to contribute somehow, somewhat. Isaiah Briscoe hitting the bench now with three fouls. So we'll keep an eye on that development. Certainly one of the Cats' top players, a sophomore. He's a real tough, tenacious kid. Edwards gets a look and runs it. Now uh, Edwards right now comes back with two solid possessions. Two good scores. Medium, medium range jump shot and drive to the goal. He's got a chance here to shine with Mayton out of the lineup. Box to the tumble. He slipped on his own. Picked up by Frazier. He'll drive it hard in the kick. Stepped out of bounds right in front of the Georgia bench. So Georgia with a sloppy possession and turned over by Willridge. And that is turnover number 10. That has been a problem spot for Mark Fox's team this season. They're averaging about 16 turnovers a game. That's too many. Too many, Obi. And I'll tell you this, they've really had struggle city in close games. They gotta find a way to win a close game. And this game we can't emphasize enough. It's M-U-S-T. Must just to keep their hopes and dreams alive. Of getting into trouble. Willridge knocks that one out of play. And now Cats and Dogs not playing so nicely together. We're gonna have, I think, a double technical here. You won't shoot him. You do not shoot him. 16-42 remaining. Let's go back to the block that started it. There's the block shot right there. All right, well, well, you don't have to talk about it. You don't have to talk about it. Just play. Just play. There's Edwards and Monk. Too much woofing. Too much woofing. So it will be a double technical on those two, Monk and Edwards. So they get charged with a foul, but they do not shoot the free throws. 37-35, Kentucky. Damn, Mark Fox's kids all year long have really played well. They've played tough. They just haven't been able to make winning plays. John Calabari said the best. They're a good team. They're really a good team. It's like in the ACC, Wake Forest is a good team. Wake Forest is a very good team. Take them out of the ACC. They're a lot for the tournament. They should be in the tournament anyway. Look at some of their losses. Talk about bubble teams. Michigan State so they got to get some more wins. Marquette's got that big win over Villanova helps them. Syracuse, I believe, is in because of the wins over Florida State and Virginia. Out of bio, mid-range, short. Tell you what, man. Agbede is a good rebound. Yes, and having a big day here in Athens so far. He gets the ball out of the double team. Got it free to Edwards and the foul against Kentucky. Nice little look right there. Agbede to get the ball inside. We take a look at both teams. BPI heading into this one. Powered by Microsoft Cloud. And why this one is so huge for Georgia. Well, I got the VBDI. That's the VBDI. I just rubbed up my ball dome. And my Vital ball dome tells me, Georgia, pretty good job by BBI. I like where they have them right now. I really believe that. The Vital ball dome in that you spit it out. Gabriel just picked up his third foul. And Edwards with a misfire at the line. He makes just 62%. Talk about some teams we talked about on the bubble. But also mid-majors to keep an eye on a very good Illinois State, New Mexico State, Belmont, Monmouth, King Rice, Akron. And Ron James supports them big time. Keep an eye on those mid-majors. Middle Tennessee State. This crowd is really up live, but he is quick. Box tough drive. Can't convert though. Tipped up Fox came down in the foul in Georgia. He can also do that. Pretty serious hops. He is really quick. He's got a tremendous first step. Came in the high school ranks in Texas. Agbede with number two. John Calipari told me his team, a little bit like 2013-14, they had lost three and a four out of four near the end of the year, and they went to the final game against UConn in the national championship. That was the Harrison kid, Julius Randle. Fox gets a look. No. Rebound tipped out high. A lot of contact. What great hustle by Willis to keep it alive. Fox wants to land again. He misses again. He's having a tough day shooting the ball. Great move and quick. 
Frazier's three. Rebounded by Edwards, and he's fouled. No basket. Fouled before that shot. So one thing, Edwards has come alive. He has really busted his gun. Playing super hard. 15.45 to go here in a one-point game in Athens, Georgia. What drives me the most is my mom and my brother. Just them helping me throughout my whole entire life. Just me trying to give back to them and my community with my college decision that was behind me. Throughout it all, I was just trying to give back to them and just look forward and just play for them. Malik Monk putting in elite effort to win college basketball's highest individual honor in our Wendy's Wooden Watch. And man, is he fun to watch. He's been struggling here today, and he's been a little inconsistent. He's had some great moments that are magical that you can't deny. Certainly the 37 against Georgia, the 47 against North Carolina was one for the ages. But he's had some games up and down shooting the basketball. Yeah, this is one of them. Tell you one thing, George has done a great job. He's limiting the fast break opportunities for Kentucky. Kentucky's got six points in transition. Now Georgia with an opportunity to take the lead. Foul trouble big here. You know, got Fox with three, Briscoe with three. And Gabriel with three. Frazier. Nice screen up on top. He used to screen well. And for the backboard, but no. Defense did a great job rotating over out of Kentucky. The back line made him really have a tough angle to make that shot. Briscoe now playing up on top. He's a driver. Briscoe's a driver and a slasher. Monk airborne, knocked out of his hands, but he draws the foul. Let's go to Chris. Calipari still pressing the energy. He's an unimpressed with it, trying to get his guys to be more aggressive. And then he challenged his guards. He looked at him. He says, who wants Frazier? Which one of you? One of you needs to step up because that's our issue right now. Hey, Chris, we heard about he's not talking a whole lot. It's the assistants. You notice he's doing all the talking? It's Don Calipari. Come on. He is never going to change. Look at the staff. He's got Kenny Payne on his left, Bobby on his right. Two fine guys. I think Kenny Payne's got ready to get a head coaching job. Mont missed both of those. It's so unusual. He's an outstanding free throw shooter. Yep, 83%. 83%. What a pass. Never. Oh, oh, no. No. Are you serious? Are you serious? No. Making sure not crazy on the sideline to storm. What a great pass by Frazier. Tough spin, and he made it in a foul as well. He'll be at the line. He does that so well. He's a driver. He's a guy that likes to attack. Came out of New Jersey with that mentality. Now watch his pass. Ray dropped it on a dime. Dropped it on a dime, as Clark Kellogg would say. And even made with that bad yes, knee. He's cheering. That's a one-legged cheer. Yeah. Jackson picks up his second foul. But what an answer by Briscoe on the other end. Tell you what, they had a guy here that used to be able to skywalk. His name was Dominique. Oh, my goodness. Goodness. Oh, up, up and away. Yeah. He was the elevator man. Briscoe the with the three point play. So Kentucky back on top by two. Respect the veteran players. He's veteran, second year player. You're a second year player in Kentucky. That's a rarity for a starter. A rarity. Jackson. The entry pass and a foul from behind. Looks like they'll get Isaac Humphreys for that personal. No frustration in the face of Monk right there. Humphreys trying to give him some size on the interior. He rotates all those big guys. Whoever plays well, Willis, Gabriel, Humphreys, they'll get some PT. Turtle Jackson on the dribble. He's a little point guard with great size. Really wanted it. Oh, he banked it in. When that goes off the glass like that, watch out. Did you call that? Tim Brandon would say the bank is open. Long range, and that one will rattle in by Hawkins. I'll tell you one thing, Kentucky has an answer. Every time they get a little emotional edge, Kentucky finds a way to come back and take the lead. Well, Kentucky has been far better outside that three-point line. 
than the Georgia Bulldogs have today. Yeah, Georgia has not been able to make the three. Frazier with a two, yes. That's what a game going on here. Oh, I love that kid. I love that kid. I like kids that are the underdogs. I like kids that nobody won, and they prove everybody wrong. Chip on their shoulder. Hawkins going strong on Frazier. Smart move because he's carrying those fouls. Yeah, Hawkins has been an absolute player, giving him positive pro productivity off that bench. Veteran, he was Mr. Basketball in Kentucky the State. Johnson knocked away, but he got it back. Eight to get out the shot. Frazier trying to operate, spinning. Hit the shot, but no basket. A foul before that, so no basket. Let's go back moments ago here. Talk about the assistants, but of course, Coach Cal. But look who jumps in. <laughs> look who jumps right in. John Calipari. Hey, look, look. Calipari jumps right in. Tony Barney talking. Who's getting the last word? Look who gets the last word. Hey, Are you Hawk kidding me? Hawkins just stepped off Dick with his third foul. Calipari's a paisan. Paisans like to talk. Trust me, I know. Yes. <laughs> Under 13 minutes to go here at Athens. Okay, that was just played really nice. Look at that one sequence. And he missed the layup, and then he had a defensive breakdown. Frazier changing directions. His jump shot. And a whistle. He got fouled. Frazier got fouled. Briscoe said, what, what? Is it on me? He said, calm down. The referee said, calm down. 12.42 to go. And the foul will go on Willis. That'll be his first. I really Saturday like primetime coming up tonight. Dig it's Virginia and North Carolina inside the ACC. Tell you, Virginia, a little bit of a slide right now. They desperately need a win to get back that swag. North Carolina at home, soft to beat. Clark Heels, Jackson having a player of the year kind of season, even though my choice, if I were voting, would be Bonzi Colson. He's been a double double machine for my boy in Notre Dame. He's had a great year. And another rare miss by Frazier. You gotta make these free throws if you want to spring an upset, especially a guy that's the best free throw shooter in the hit in the history of Georgia basketball, right? Obi? Yes, that's correct. Percentage wise at 83% over his career. He's missed three today. <laughs> this is a good foul shooting team. Not a great shooting team, but a good free throw shooting team. 75% is the team. Makes the second. And again, Yante Maiden on the bench since the early moments of the game because of a knee injury. Not going to see him the rest of this one. A giant loss for the Bulldogs. Can they overcome it? It would be an amazing story if they did. Fox back on the floor. Out of Iowa in close. Good Grabs second effort. Miss. Good second effort. And a whistle before that shot. So a foul on Georgia on that second effort. Now Kentucky said so few offensive rebounds. Watch right here. Big contact. Draws the contact. Steps in. And has the blow to whistle. On Kessler. He's got to be careful. He can be called for an offensive foul there. He's decided to bring Fox in with those three fouls. Briscoe's jump shot. Oh, got a great look and he missed it. That's the one area, it's a fishing area for him. It's up and down, shooting the ball. He's worked so hard on trying to improve in that area. There's one of the two triple doubles by a Wildcat this season. Fox has the other one. Say one thing though, Briscoe brings to the table so much more than just about shooting. Frazier the one-hander and he knocks it down. So well, we're seeing the kid really taking his game to an incredible level. 19. Doing everything he can. Indeed. Fox over the top. Out of bounds. Nice catch. Nice pass though too. Great vision. Fox with the great look. He's going to be a heck of a player at the next level. The finalist for the Bob Cousy Award goes to the top college point guard in America. I tell you, number 14, Mr. Cousy, Holy Cross superstar. You talk about the wizardry and his passing ability. Yes, with style. Can they get someone else hot other than this guy, Frazier? 
Well, he hit a big three right before the first half came to an end. It's out of bio. They lost it again, but he's on the line. Trying, trying to pick up the tempo. Well, Georgia has been down this road before. Some really, really tough losses in very close games. Trying to change that script on their home floor here tonight. John, thank you very much. 11 minutes to go here. And a tremendous environment in Athens. The students were out early this morning and waiting in line in the rain to get the best seats to come out. Oh, they're all fired up. I was in a crowd with them earlier today, and I had a great time. They were so fired up. They were anticipating upset city, baby. I tell you, they need this win desperately. Desperately on their resume. It's been nothing but one heartbreak after another. Parker feeding inside, got it into the big guy. He's gonna be a good player. I really like that kid's potential. Abede with two. Abede can rebound. He's playing right now. A tough matchup inside without a bad bio. Gabriel looks. Yes, nice touch, and he knocks in a three-point shot. That's his ability. He's very talented young guy who can make threes. He goes at it every day in practice for Willis to find out who's going to get the PT playing time. His first points. Parker. Fall away. Sticks it. They're matching up. Matching up with each possession. Out of bio out of the double team. Briscoe, another good look. Fox came out of nowhere to keep that alive, and that leads to two by Briscoe. Well, you got to credit right there, Fox making it happen. You're right, Obi. He came in with the offensive tip, and the ball right to Briscoe, who finished it off. And a timeout, Georgia. Ten minutes to play here. Still tight in Athens, 52-49, Kentucky. at 52 to 49 one of the things that mark tapox told me earlier today that he was concerned with was his team's fatigue that he showed some over the last couple days so he changed up practice a little bit let them off on wednesday short of practice on thursday and then yesterday a short of practice than they would normally go the day before the game watching them today though i have not seen a lot of fatigue however dick in this kind of environment that's got to give you some kind of energy tell you what the adrenaline right now chris the adrenaline you're playing out here you're playing against a team with an elite program kentucky you're fighting for survival. you got to give everything you have. Can't worry about any stamina. Off the window. That's a very tough shot. Giotta, the 6'7 junior from Senegal with the basket to make it a one-point game. Giotta with that nice drive across the lane. They haven't been able to stop Kentucky, though. Every time they've scored, Kentucky's found a way to answer. Let's go finding the lane. That'll spin away. It's it. crazy. Now he's working on a 19-point game, Dick. That was a good shot selection right there because Briscoe, that's his strength, driving to the basket. See, right now, I would attack him off the basket. He's got three fouls. You're going to attack him. They switch, rotated. Oh, oh, are you serious? He said, you want to attack? I'll show you attack. Oh, Mulder and a three. What an answer. Hey, why does he play more often? I want guys that can make shots. He can make shots. Johnson Briscoe tangled up there. So the officials break them up. Nine minutes to go. What did I tell you a moment ago? Through the break, Molden. There's nothing like guys that can make shots. Look at this play right here. That was dramatic. And then Molden says, "You can make that great play. I'm squaring my body and I'm draining a three, baby. Nothing but nylon." Here's a kid that was getting no minutes at all last year, could have folded the tent, kept working and working and working, and now he's become a valuable contributor to Kentucky. Frazier now 21, here's Jackson. Trying to get around Fox. Piazza. Oh, he got a camera. And lays it up and in anyway. Where's he been? Where's he been? He's just tied the game. Oh, where has he been? Anything you can do, we can do better. That is over. They went to, they're going to the zone. Going to the zone. Mulder can be the answer to the zone. His shooting ability. Box. In and out. And another 
Uh-oh. Oh, oh Briscoe. Uh, Briscoe's uh, after that. That's the second <laughs> time. You can see Briscoe. Uh-oh. It's getting hot. Uh-oh. Yeah, Briscoe had been going at it before. You can see a little bit of that building up. They did a great job stopping it. Jumping. Really good job. Good job stopping it right away. No place for this. No place for this. Play basketball. Well, we've already had a double technical. Great job by the official stepping right in. See their arms locking up there, and they both went down. Brian Shea jumped right in there. Watch him jump right in. You talk about a referee jumping in. Right down. Look at the referee. Right in. Right between both guys. Break that sucker up. No place for that. Well, the officials got together. Let's see if there's any residual call here with 8.20 to go. And a 55-55 tie. Deontay and Briscoe tangled up. So they are going to go to the monitor, which they're allowed to do. To see if there's something extra there. Go to the monitor to determine if there's anything flagrant. Yes. They want to determine if anything was flagrant. That warrants some technicals. Their arms get hooked up. Look at this right here. They get hooked. Almost like a takedown. It did. Almost like a takedown. Looked like a pretty good wrestling move. Now, a flagrant one, the personal foul wow. deemed excessive in nature, causing excessive contact with an opponent and not a legitimate attempt to play the ball or the player. That's a one. Flagrant two is a foul involving contact. Not only excessive, but severe or extreme while the ball is live. I think their arms just got tangled. I really do. And then they got a little bit. There's the robot. Now, Georgia trailed at halftime. And they trailed at halftime to win the last two games. And they've done it five times this year, but. Nothing would be bigger for the Georgia program this season than to win this one coming from behind. And this would be a, this would be a signature win. There's the contact. I watch you take. They hook their arms, and then he pulls them down. Now, is that excessive? It's close. Very close. Briscoe looks like he dragged them down. Briscoe looked like he dragged them and pulled them down. Well, Brian's going to come over and let us know here. Just a common foul on Briscoe. That's the call. So no flagrant foul. It's a common foul. They decide to call on Briscoe. But it's also number like, four on him. Yeah, it's four now. So locked up 55-55. But now both sides have to keep their cool. And for Georgia, that is hugely important. As they try and play their way off the bubble. Kentucky, big foul trouble. The one thing about Kentucky, in fairness to the Kentucky kids, they take everybody's biggest hit. Yes. I don't care what you talk about. Whoever they play, that team is going to rise to a higher level. Same with the North Carolina. Same with the Duke. Same with all the great programs. That you have to take every day, and you have to match the commitment that the other team is making. Papgiata at the line. He has really been strong here with two incredible drives. Well, he has just put Georgia in the lead. Unbelievable. For one of the rare times here today. He attended the Rock School in Gainesville, Florida. They helped Senegal to their first ever gold medal at the 2012 U18 African Championships. And has just put the Bulldogs up by two. Played in junior college. College is... Southern Idaho would have had some good programs. Now the lead changes. They're zoning. They're zoning. Fires Mulder, picks off the rebound. He has to get out of there with it. I would find Mulder and get him shots. Here's one. Now this time, big fight for the rebound. And a whistle inside the lane with 7.59 to go. And that foul will go on Kessler of Georgia, which will be his third. Some intensity, baby. Call your friends up. This baby could go to the wire. They need it. Oh, do they need it? The Bulldogs need it, Obi. They need it so badly. 
Wahab. Can't see Mr. Wahab, a former boss at ESPN. Now the boss up at Syracuse and Athletics. Jim Beheim, Mike Krzyzewski, a few wins between them. Just a few now. You look at these close losses by Georgia. I mean, just gut-wrenching affairs. Overtime against Florida. Overtime against Kentucky. Losing by nine and one that kind of got away. The two-point defeat to number 19, South Carolina. And you add them all up. You know, if they just win a couple of those, maybe three of those games, Georgia is ranked in the top 25. Absolutely. And you don't even have up there, number one, they lost by a point to Texas A&M on a controversial problem with the clock. So unbelievable. You're right, exactly, Obi. They're like four points away. Right open. They looped them open there for that three. Can't make it. Tipped out of play. And it'll be Georgia ball. Even though the margin was big in the Kentucky game in overtime, I mean, they had a situation with 10 seconds. They're leading by two. A month tied the game to go to OT. They're like four points away. Same with the Florida game. They could have won those both games in regulation. Kind of amazing that Georgia has the slight advantage as far as points in the paint with Mate out of the ball game except for two minutes. He's only played two minutes, unlikely to return. And that was because really in the play of Edwards and on Bay on Beta. He wants the ball. Big guy wants the ball inside. He got it. Tipped around. Georgia. Another battle. Fox. And it was out of play off Georgia. They're going to say off Jackson. Had a chance on the offensive boards on the inside. They got the ball to the interior. That was ping pong. Georgia by two. Monkey's been very quiet here. Very quiet. He's a time on a live. Look at that drive. Fox foul on the play. You're right about Monk. He can get noisy in a hurry. Oh, man. Did you see the quickness? Did you see the quickness? Now, this was made early in the game. He went down and Briscoe accidentally backed into him, clutching at that knee. This was just a couple of minutes into the game. He hobbled off, and he has not been able to return. And I'll be honest with you. We thought blowout city. I was searching for all the little tidbits we're going to talk about. Bubble teams, mid-majors, everything. Got to make those free throws. Fox on that line. The Fox 72% foul shooter. It's amazing how you have to rise when you're in Kentucky to meet the challenge you face on a regular basis. Everybody wants a beat you. As Bede did pick up his third foul as he fouled Fox. There's another one coming. Only two points so far tonight. And another miss. He's had a tough, tough bad evening. He's really been struggling City shooting the ball. Frazier's going to attack him. He's got fouls. He doesn't want to guard him right now because of the foul situation. I would attack him. So right there, big screen up on top. Watch, watch that was released to go to the goal. Frazier gets his jumper. Can't connect. Like that rebound right there. Willis right up on the glass. Kentucky trying to tie or take the lead. Up to the two, and he got it. He makes big shots. He's tough down the stretch. He's a clutch player. Those are his first points in the second half, Dick. Will not be his last. I'll tell you one thing, he's a clutch performer. He's been that way since he took the Kentucky uniform on. Tied at 57. Too strong by Parker. They haven't been able to make it I think they're like one for 12. And Parker's having a tough time for the season at 18%. Monk went airborne and he'll go out of foul. See, Monk rises right about now. He shows why he's a star, why he's a real PTP. He wants the rock in his hands when the game is on the line. Now, Bede with number four. So now he's in very deep foul trouble. And that'll put Monk to the line. 83%. This is a key man now in serious trouble for Georgia. He missed his last Piper's on the line and missed two free throws. That's not going to happen too often. And game one against Georgia and Lexington, he was a huge part of the narrative with 37 points. Nice soft rim there. And Kentucky leads it by one. And coming up on Sunday, 
from Philadelphia at 4 p.m. inside the American Conference. It's UConn against Temple on ESPN. You mentioned Philadelphia. I know you're going to be there. You mentioned Philadelphia. It comes to my mind. Villanova. Can they repeat? They have the potential. I'm telling you, that team is unreal the way they can shoot the basketball. Jay Wright's club could pull a Gators back-to-back. 6-17 -back. Mm. remaining here. It's been a fascinating game because early on, Maiden was lost to the injury, and Frazier was in foul trouble. But Georgia was able to stick with Kentucky. And even though Kentucky had the lead at the break, Georgia took momentum into halftime on the big three by Frazier right in front of the buzzer. Yeah, Frazier made some big shots, came in. They brought him back in. I thought it was a good move by Mr. Fox. Brought him in with the two fouls because it looked like it might have been getting away, and he didn't want that big spread at halftime to negate a great effort. But Frazier delivered big at the end. 21 points for him. One thing Georgia is doing an exceptional job of over the last 10 or 11 minutes, they have not turned it over once. And also, not giving Kentucky fast break opportunity. I think Kentucky was not even in double figures in scoring and transition. That was true the first time they met, too. They only had six fast break points in a game that went overtime, and the Wildcats won it. And remember, they have six in this one. Remember this, the last four points, who scored them for Kentucky? Mark. Wyatt, the most for the half, waking up at winning time. Kentucky by two. Tough drive. Frazier through the contact, and he almost made it. Oh, wow. I thought that baby was going down. He turned the Jets on. You talk about speed and quickness. He saw the gap, saw an unbelievable gap, and he attacked that gap. Watch this. He sees the gap. There he goes. Oh, I thought he had a tough break there with that baby falling out. Out of bio with a second. And again, Frazier for the year at 87% at the line. I'll probably jinx him. Tell me he's the best free throw shooter in the history of Georgia. Not this time. He's playing 37 minutes a game in SEC games. You know, Mark Fox, I'm looking right here. At 21 wins in 2011 and 2015. Went to the NCAA tournament both those years. He's had 920 win seasons in his career as a head coach. Did a good job when he was out in Nevada. Nevada. And Frazier second on that there. And it's tied again. Now they're going to go for the defensive stop. And they've decided we're going to zone. We're going to zone. This goes back with four fouls. He drives right to the zone. Driving it. No whistle. Tipped out. Oh, oh, it's oh watch this. And lays it in. Fox didn't want to foul. Fox did not want to foul him. They went right to the goal. He can play for me any day, Mr. O'Brien. Entry for Bam Adebayo. Off the double team. He got fouled. fouled. He got fouled. He sure did. I think he gets fouled often in there, and he doesn't get the calls to go his way because of his strength. Second I, one on Edwards. I think a lot of times guys that are physical and big and strong, they get a one deal. Look at his speed right now. Look at this. He lets him go right to the goal. Didn't want to foul him. This has been a great time being here. I want to say afternoon because we arrived about 3.30, 4 o'clock. Yes, 8 o'clock. You uh, got here, man. Uh, and on schedule and out of bio at the line. You know, 62%, but he leads Kentucky in foul shot attempts. So this is an area he can improve in. He's a terrific kid, too. If you have to speak to him, what a great kid. He really is. Freshman from Little Washington, North Carolina. Very smooth there to retie the game at 61. Free throw shooting could be big here coming down the stretch of this game. Yeah, that's true. Georgia has an advantage. They shoot 75%. And also the ball's going to be in the hands of this guy if it comes down to winning time. Frazier, and he's an 87% free throw shooter. God has made an impact. He'll lift down. Hey, Deanna, he's been unbelievable. He's going to score. That's the first three they made in about a month. Georgia by three, caught up on five minutes to go. Fox seeking contact, battling for the rebound. Loose and whistle going the other way. Foul on Kentucky. Crisco right in the middle of that, and that's it for him. Crisco's out of the game. 
So I think he lost his cool a little bit. I really do. Too valuable to Kentucky. They need him on the floor. He's going to know he's got four fouls. Oh, there's no doubt. No doubt about it. I got one eye and I can see that. You got four fouls. You can't do that. That's not flopping. That's no flopping. Parker took the charge. Wow, he says. Too good a player. He's a good player, this guy. They need him on the floor. John talking up. Like in Georgia, squeeze out a giant victory over Kentucky. The blow by Frazier. No. Oh, he did everything right except score. Now watch this kid in transition. Watch this kid. And quickly to the other round, a blocking foul against Georgia. We are seeing some quickness out here. It's amazing watching the quickness of JJ and watching the quickness of Fox. Wait, who's quicker than Fox? Oh, look at this. Look at this here. Wow, she's quick. She's quick. I mean, that was four seconds from one end to the basket. You need to do it quicker than that if you have to. Giotto with the personal box back to the line. It's hard to fathom and believe that Fox and Monk and Adam Meyer last year, not even a year ago, were playing high school basketball. Right. I mean, that's unbelievable. Fox in Houston, Texas. And 64-63. Georgia by one. Louisville, North Carolina coming up Wednesday at 9 o'clock in the dandy. Georgia's been in this kind of a battle a number of times this year, and I've always come up on a short end. Will it happen again, or will they have the magic to be able to close this out? Parker, airmail that one. That's too strong. Here comes Buck, man. He likes this time on oh, good ball movement. Good ball movement. No, Willis, big rebound up and in. I tell you what, he plays like that on the offensive board. They get a lot of PT playing time. Great offensive rebound by Willis. That's the second one for him. Nine ties, nine lead changes. Frazier's open jumper, yes. He splits the defense. Great change in direction. He has great handle. If he's not all SEC, that'd be an investigation. He might be an All-American. Oh, he's terrific. He's better than advertised. Fox uh, on the spin. Quick into the lane for two. Oh, a great move. Smooth. Smooth. Terrific. We're seeing a heck of a basketball game. What a college basketball game. Had a great one Monday night with Kansas and West Virginia. And this is Super One. Frazier again. Giata. No. Here come the Cats, baby. It's winning time. Coming up on the three-minute mark here in Athens. Now one team has been able to know how to close games out, and another team that has not been able to. Fox reversing oh, course. Right. And lost it out of play. So that will go back to Georgia. This one dripping with emotion. Consternation for Kentucky. Will it be a joyful ending? For Georgia, they need it desperately. Now, thank you very much. Two outstanding guards in the SEC going toe-to-toe -to -toe in the last three minutes in a one-point game. I tell you, quickness against quickness. Virginia and North Carolina will be a heck of a battle. I know Dan and Jay and company are all ready for that one. Now, here we go. Hawkins now is guarding Frazier. Frazier giving it up for Parker. He wants to paint. Still driving it. Wriggling in. Oh, what a terrific play. Terrific job. Look at his quickness. Out of bio to the other end. Chai puts pressure on you. Fox the way he runs the ball up the court. Monk, tough game so far, but draws the foul with 232 remaining. He, he just knows how to score, Monk. Malik knows how to score, especially late in the game. Look at his drive right here now. Watch this. He's going to take the ball, spin. Defense rotates over. He sees a little gap. Seam goes in. Great hang. He says, match that. Play the game of horse to match that shot. Monk to the line. He's good on the free throw line. He's really been good his entire year. Averaging 22 points per game. Top scorer for Kentucky. Georgia lost their top score two minutes into the game. You know, he stepped in right for Jamal Murray. He said he was a big time scorer for that. 
And when the Fox stepped into Tyler Yule, she was a giant when the ball was in his hands. So Monk smoothly puts Kentucky back on top by one. We have one timeout. Frazier's three. Yes! This kid has done it all. He's got like 30, doesn't he? He's got like 30. On the button. Well, that Fox says, watch me. I'm going to take you one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, 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 that. Oh. Are you serious? Match that. How, that. how savvy is that shot? And the defense recovered, and he just smoked him. And he kept his pivot foot down. He didn't walk. What an incredible game. One shot match of one another. There goes Fox. He loses his balance, keeps the pivot foot down. Great hang time to the basket. Then he got a foul. Hawkins committed to foul number four to stop the clock with 2.05 to go. He's the one guy you don't want to foul. Frazier at just, the line here. I love your name, Frazier. Frazier goes down. I love him. you got a pretty good Cosell goal. And I love And rolls it in. A little break here. Let me just tell you this. You want a nice book to read about Kentucky? Go get this book We're by David go. Snell. The Baron and the Bear. I read some of the highlights in it. Good book. David Kingsley Snell. Here it is now. Foul line. And Frazier makes the pair. He has done it all. He has done it all. Best season high, 32 points. Can they come up with a stop? He wants the ball. Here's Mont. He wants the ball. Nice offensive rebound. Big rebound by Willis. Willis has really helped them big time. Some huge rebounds. Yes, sir. Well, you can see the intensity right now. The Fox and out of month. Fox on the drive again. And a clean play on the line, however, and turned over. What was that call? I could tell from once. It was a clean, that clean stop, but in transition, trying to get off that baseline, he stepped, stepped on the line. Oh, wow. Wow. What a break for Kentucky here. Look at his quickness. Are you kidding me? This guy is special, Fox. I don't care he's had a bad day shooting the ball. Look at that left foot is right on the line. Right on the line. There it is. Right there, baby. No doubt. The official doing a good job. He is, is out of bounds. Yep, Frazier's left foot. Hey, it would be. You talk about heartbreak hotel. They lost in overtime to Kentucky. They lost to Florida in overtime, both on a the road. They lost by one to Texas A&M. They lost by two to South Carolina. If they lose this game, I'm telling you, it is incredible what they faced. That is Frazier seated in the huddle. He's got to be exhausted. Again, he oh, plays wow. about 37 minutes a game at SEC games. You think he's earned a scholarship? <laughs> I think he has. He's earned a scholarship? One. Incredible. Now, this one under official review. What are they reviewing here? And that play, that, that call on the baseline. Yeah, it's very easy to say. Here's the Bulldogs' tournament resume now, coming in at 15 and 11, 6 and 7 in the conference, 0 and 8 against the BPI top 50, but a strength of schedule at number 17. Well, what's going to hurt him, and I agree with Lenardi here. You go 6-8 in this conference, which is not one of the heavyweight conferences from top to bottom. Even though it have been close losses, they're in trouble. If they win this game, they're right there knocking on the door. I thought that last call was very obvious. Frazier was absolutely on the line. Well, I thought so. I don't know. But then again, I don't know. They might be looking at something totally different. So 143 to play here in Athens. It's been a heck of a game. Oh, it's terrific. Absolutely terrific. That's why I love college basketball. I'm addicted to college basketball. People say, why don't you stay away 77? I act like 12. Are you kidding me? I'm addicted to it, Obi. Great defensive play. Great Frazier defense. with the strip, but then that foot on the line. It's right on the line. I don't know what the big delay is. Come on, guys. Let's play basketball. You're breaking the momentum of a great game. Breaking the momentum. We got a great game here. Don't take this away from the kids. Let them play. All right, now we're going to get an explanation. Shot clock at 18. No reset there. 
That might have been one of the things they were looking at. Which took a little extra time there. So now Fox will inbound. And Georgia pressing. Georgia by two. They better find Monk. Monk. And out of bio on the inside. Well, this kid wants the ball too, Fox. Shot clock down to four. Back out for oh. Fox. Dead on. But he missed it. Out of bio. Long way. Hustle in the corner. And a timeout. Kentucky. What a tremendous rebound. You got to come up with that rebound if you want to win late in the game. Give it Kentucky another possession. 120 oh. to go. Bam Adebayo, the 6'10 freshman. Hustle, scrap. Gave him a chance here now. Give him another opportunity to either tie or take the lead. Big play right here. Look at that hustle. Look at that hustle. And a good balance, too. Look at a little balance to stay in balance. Well, the hot hand for Georgia, and may have to be again the last 120. J.J. Frazier He's with 32 points. He's done it all. He has done it all. See, right now, hides the blood, wants to stay in the game. Sportsmanship goes over, picks up the opponent, and big shot after big shot, baby. He was tickling the twine, hustling, scrapping, quick, explosive. Pass, put the ball on the down to Edwards. He's done it all. He's played his hard out. He's played as good as the game all these. I've seen anybody play this year. Even a cheerleader getting the crowd revved up again. They better find Monk. They better find Monk. Fox is making things happen with penetration. There he goes again off the window. I tell you, penetration. They can't keep him from making the turn. And he has tied it at 73. With 109 to go. He, look at this right here. Fox wants to make the big play. And he's being very quick to the goal. And nobody's staying in front of him. Defense got to rotate over a little bit late right there by Arbede. I love their guards in Kentucky, man. How could you not like Fox or Monk? Well, each side now with one timeout remaining. Down the stretch we come and a dandy here. Tied at 73. Let's go back to John. Obi, thanks so much. As we get set for North Carolina and Virginia, the best offense going up against the best defense in the ACC. Roy Williams and company hoping for a victory. Seventy-three, seventy-three. Kentucky and Georgia, a giant game for the Bulldogs as far as their NCAA tournament holds. Yeah, and certainly Kentucky win or lose, we know where they're going dancing. But right now for Georgia, this could be their season right here. Obi, a minute and nine on the clock. This could be their season, playing their hearts out with their star out of the game, went out of the game first two minutes of the game. Mate. Average 19 a game and 7 rebounds. Well, Kentucky started the daytime in Florida for first place in the ACC. So a big one for them to Frazier. Trying to split the D, the layup. He got it! Oh, wow! What an incredible move. We've been saying it all day. Now can they come up with a stop? Frazier's in front of Fox. Can he stay in front? Oh, what a change. Fox with a foul on Georgia. Oh, they can't stay in front of him. It's unreal what we're seeing here by these two point guards. Unreal their quickness. Look at this right here. He's going to split him right here. He's going to see the opening, change direction, go to the goal, protect the ball, seal the defense. Let the just go. Look at the change of direction. Oh, my. Oh, my. As the Denver would say, oh, my. Oh, my. Uh, Bede has just filed out for Georgia. Fox at the line to shoot two with 44.4 to go. So better rough out the Fox there if you're Georgia than Monk. Monk's a better free throw shooter. He drops it in the first one. I'd say he's elevated his game though, Fox, here in the last 10 minutes. No doubt. He has elevated his game. Fouled out. And out of lost size. Mating out. Injury. On day out. So out of Milo could be a major factor if this goes to overtime. He makes the pair. He has taken his game up a big notch here. He was struggling. 
Fox with 12. We're tied at 75. Yeah, Kentucky's going to get the ball back, that's for sure. And he tried to spread the court a little. Diaba leading it. Blocked by Adebayo and a foul against Georgia with 27.9. And Bam Adebayo with a big defensive play. Well, great defensive play, but why not the ball in Frazier's hands coming down to the end of the game? I don't understand why Frazier is not the guy. There's the drive to the goal, there's the block, and there's the contact. Edwards with his second foul. Fox back. Kentucky wins this game, it's going to be the play of Fox. He has really taken over a lot of stages. And he just puts Kentucky in the lead with another one coming. He's straight on the free throw line. See, I don't understand it'll be why Frazier didn't have the ball spreading the court out and they're getting the big shot they couldn't stay in front of him. And Tyree Crump coming back on now from Mark Fox. He's a kid capable of making the throw. Crump can shoot the ball. Now Georgia, they've had their hearts broken so many times. Is Fox doing it to them now? He has scored their last seven for Kentucky, make it eight. He has been a guy that has really showed why they like him so much. The top ten pick in the NBA draft. Now, now Frazier has the ball. They have a timeout to go. On the drive, the bump, the shot, and can't skip it. Fox with a big rebound and fouled with 13.7 to go. Wow, wow. Talk about lonely street, the Georgia Bulldogs. Well, they got the shot they wanted yep, from the guy they wanted. Yeah. From. Yep. That has been a hot guy all day, and here goes Fox back to the line. To me, NBA guys watching him now. His stock is rising. Boy, Kentucky making their foul shots, Dick. They have made their last 13 free throws. Yes, sir. We said it could come down to the free throw line. The free throw line could be a difference maker. Now, Georgia has been a better foul shooting team, but not in this half. The way Kentucky is draining them, up by three in a timeout. This is a big one right here. You make a two-possession game. So 78-75, a closer wow. look now at these heartbreaking defeats for Georgia against the AP Top 25, counting five of them. Shot here, shot there, unreal. And you don't even have up there, for example, they weren't Top 25 team, and they lost also to Texas A&M. Look at this. Well, they've been down this road before. This free throw is big, Obi. This is the big free throw. Then you got a decision to make. If he misses it, if you're Kentucky, you allow him to shoot a three, play just tough defense. I think it might because they haven't shown they can shoot the three. They haven't shown they can shoot it. And if you're Kentucky, you want to try to get the ball out of Frazier's hands. But for that to happen to be a factor, he would have to miss the free throw, and they would have to rebound. I want to let you know that North Carolina and Virginia is underway on ESPN News. If you want to see the beginning of that one, here 13.7 seconds to go. And De'Aaron Fox is back on the line. Has a missed one. Because he's made how many in a row here? But Kentucky is making shot after shot at the line. 13 in a row. They've made 13 shot. straight. 14 out of 18 in the game. But the Manilon, he's been money. He's been money. They're getting ready to celebrate in Kentucky. Frazier has to hurry. Looking for a two-pointer and draws the foul with 9.8 seconds to go. Yeah, not a play you want for Jack Calipari. Stop the clock, allow him to put points on the board, and allow him to go to full-court pressure. And a timeout, Kentucky. The foul went on Dominic Hawkins, who has just fouled out with nine points. This one is not over yet. No, if he converts here, they got to make a play happen defensively. So it'll be Frazier, the best foul shooter in the history of the Georgia program, at the line. An 87% foul shooter this season. Tell you what, you can talk, you know, certainly Fox has been MVP down the stretch. But win or lose, the best player on the floor today has been the young guy at the free throw line. J.J. Frazier, 34 points. He's been a solid goal PTP. So Frazier to shoot two. 
What an early evening he's had. Incredible. He deserves a big meal tonight. Well, he'd love to feast on a victory over Kentucky, but that's going to take some magic here. Got to go into a trap defensively, as we know. Try for the steal. He won't get it. He got a foul. I hope they missed the foul shot. Made the pair. Right now, Kellen takes him a time off this clock. Inbound to Monk, and he'll draw the foul with 8.9 to go. Smart play by Fox, getting it to Monk. One of the premier free throw shooters. She's better than 80%. That's being cerebral. Knowing where to get the ball. Getting it into the right guy's hands. Champ and Calipari's team, she's like, talk all you want about his recruiting ability. The guy can flat out coach. He can flat out coach. He understands how to manage a game, how to get the most out of people. Monk, all net on the first one. Oh, he and Fox are going to win 14 in a row. Hey, I thought he was doing it. I thought the assistants were doing all the coaching. I thought the assistants. Oh, uh, yeah, I don't see assistant. I see Mr. Tyler Barry. A big, big shot here for Mark. And he made that one as well. He's earning his savings. Boy, 16 straight. Four shots. Mark with it. It's over. And it's off him and out of play with six seconds to go. They lose this. You should have an investigation. 81-77. And 6.1 seconds to play. And a timeout. Who's doing the talking? Official. Who's doing the talking? This is an official review, Who's by the way. Who's doing the talking? He's earning his cash. So Georgia came in, Dick, hoping to pick off the number 13 team in the country. Right now, Kentucky up by four. And this is why they're taking a look to see if it's, if it's off him or if it's off of Georgia if it went off Willridge. Looks like it's off Willard, right? Looks like it's off his right, right by the knee area. Last two minutes of regulation or overtime, they can go to the monitor on a play like this that goes out of play. Well, to put it in perspective right now, Georgia, unless a miracle, I cannot see how they could possibly get into the end syndrome unless they win the tournament. And you know what? Crazy things, they're capable of winning that tournament. They're capable of winning the SEC tournament. They're that good. And I think they'd have to get Mayton back. Now, I don't know his status for the rest of the year. Mark Fox's clubs are well coached. They play hard. They have understand a little short on talent versus some that upgrade the recruiting level a little bit. But he does a heck of a job. He's a great guy. He and his wife, Sydney, do a lot for cancer. So it's going to be Kentucky ball. So they reverse that call. I thought it was the right call. I thought it was off Woolwich. I agree. 5.6 to go. And Kentucky is really putting this game on ice at the foul line when they've made 16 straight. Well, we always talk about the simplicity of the foul line usually can be a difference maker. And it was certainly here tonight. Well, they've been clutch. Absolute clutch. 60% for bio, but he is 3-for-3 three three in this one. Well, it becomes contagious. You see teammates make it. It's like it becomes contagious when you don't make shots. So it looks like the Wildcats are going to go to 22 and 5. Fighting this one. 12 and 2 inside the SEC. Frazier to take the last shot. That's fitting for Georgia, but it does not go, unlike many others. And Kentucky hangs on. And add that one to the list of very, very tough losses for Georgia. 82 77, the final score here today in Athens. For my partners, Dickie V and Chris Budden, I'm Dave O'Brien. Thanks so much for joining us. Very entertaining. Virginia and North Carolina is coming up in just a moment. Right now, we send it to Dan Schulman and Jay Billis.